Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. Uh, it's good to be back with you after being uh, gone for a week. Uh, thank you, Pastor Paul Pfeffer, for filling in for me uh, in my absence. Uh, I was telling a couple of folks, we went back and I went down to Atlanta to visit our youngest son, only to find out that it was just shortly after we got there, he had a business trip to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so we short of the day to come back to spend time with him. But it is, uh, it is a good time. Uh, uh, we continue to uh, evolve, I guess I would say, in uh, our technology. As you see, as those of you who have been here of the last few uh, weeks, and every week, there's a little bit, a little bit uh, more. We're looking forward to a time a couple of weeks from now when the experiment will be done and the um, kind of uh, got it all together. And at that point, we will uh, uh, have an opportunity to thank the people who continue to work to uh, improve these uh, logistics and also to recognize uh, Joy Minerano, who is a new staff person who is helping with uh, the communication. Uh, are there prayer requests uh, before we begin the service? Any prayer requests coming from folks who are gathered here this morning? That any? No. no. You're just standing and stretching. Yes, <laughs> any prayer requests from folks on Zoom? And no one has to rely on you to tell them. I don't I think so. so. Uh, so let's begin with the children's prayer. Children, you want to gather up here, please? Brian, you want to take the cross? Turn around this way. Lots of cues. That's excellent. That's excellent. You fold your hands and say the prayer with me. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. And Sunday school teacher, I think, is back. <laughs> yep, there she is. <laughs> We continue with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. First of all, most merciful God, we confess that we are in captive of sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in the word and the deed. By what we have done and by what we have let it on. We have not loved you with our we have not loved our neighbors and our love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ is given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a call and a minister of the Church of Christ by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to stand as you are able for our.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with the garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading of St. Paul's second letter to, to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel.
length of this gospel, I'm going to invite you to be seated. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out, himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he went off. He set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran out, put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sand sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come. Your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the older son became angry and refused to go in. The father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command. And yet you've never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The gospel of the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, could you tell that I identified with the Father? 
I guess that's something that you talk about maternal instinct, and there's also paternal instinct. Today's all three lessons are so powerful that each one of them could stand on its own. So you're gonna to have to sit through three sermons, <laughs> but I'll make each of them short. The first lesson that Jules read for us is this phenomenal moment when the Israelites have come out of Egypt They've wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, being fed by God, by man, this miraculous bread-like substance that God caused to fall upon the camp of the Israelites for all of those 40 years. They were in the desert. There was nothing to eat, but God provided for them. In this amazing story, they have arrived in the, what we call the Holy Land, in the promised land, the land that had been promised to Abraham and Sarah many, many, many hundreds of years before this celebration takes place. They have moved from the wilderness into the promised land. And now for the first time in this land that was not their own and now is, they celebrate the Passover their annual celebration of their liberation. But they celebrate it using not manna that falls out of the sky, but the very crops, the wheat of this new land that God has given to them. And on that day when they moved into the land that God had promised to them, the manna stopped falling. They were now there. Promise fulfilled. They were in the Holy Land. That's the end of the first sermon. <laughs> Second sermon from Second Corinthians probably with the, with the exception of that story about the prodigal son that we'll get to in a minute. With the exception of that, I think this is my all time favorite passage in all of scripture. Just in case you missed it. I don't have it. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I do. I, I, I think I know it well enough after all these years. Paul says, in Christ, God was reconciling the whole creation to God's self. Not accepting the reconciliation or accepting the offering of creation that brings them back into relationship with God, but that God does the reconciling. That God is always reaching out to all parts of the creation, calling us back into right relationship with God, but it's based on God's work, God's will. In Christ, God was reconciling the whole creation to himself and 
entrusting us with the ministry of reconciliation. What higher calling is there for us as the people of God to be a reconciling people? To identify and name brokenness. That's the law part of our law and gospel connection. To name the brokenness, the very various kinds of brokenness in the world, but not just to name them or label them, but to move into them, to work for peace, for reconciliation, for forgiveness. We have been entrusted with this ministry of reconciliation. End of second. And the third, this third sermon on the, the prodigal son, we usually call it, the story. The story is not, although the, the most interesting character is this, this son who goes off and learns, and learns his lesson. But the focus of the story, and this is by far the longest parable that Jesus, uh, that Jesus shares with his disciples. The focus of the story is on loving, forgiving father. The father who thought his son was dead but now celebrates that he's alive and runs out to embrace this wayward son. Even if he is coming back to grovel, the father will hear nothing of that and raises him, lifts him up, embraces him, kisses him. You are alive, you are my son. Not you were my son, you are my son. In the second part of that, uh, of that very same parable, talks about those who have never run away from God, the older son. And this is, of course, Jesus is addressing the Jewish leaders. They say, why are you going after all those others who don't, don't follow the way of God? And Jesus says, you, the righteous, have always been a part of God's family. But it is this mission of reconciliation, to use Paul's words, it is this mission of reconciliation to go out to those who don't find themselves within the family, within the fold, and to make sure that the love in the story of the love of the Father, kind of in the analysis, the love of God is there always for everyone. That's the end of sermon three, but there's a post note. Sometimes people say, when they read something in the Bible, and they say, well, that's only a story. And yet, can you think of anything more powerful than, for instance, this story that Jesus told his disciples? This didn't actually happen, what's portrayed in this story the father and the two sons. This is an incredibly powerful story that Jesus uses to convey the absolute heart of his teaching and his, and his ministry. The absolute center is God's will to embrace us all. 
God's will that we all experience ourselves as daughters and sons of God, beloved by God and empowered by that love to live in the world as the children of God that God has declared us to be. No more powerful story than the greatest story. The story of God's love for us. Incarnate in Jesus. Crucified by the world. Raised by the power of God. So that we can live now and forever as beloved children of God. In Jesus' name.
Please join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce the harvest that sustains your uh, entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil, nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Russia. Act quickly to bring an end to a war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving, especially Sue, Pam, Landon, Ellis, Ginny, Lorita, Lavon, Carl and Bev, Debbie, Eleanor, Rich, Phyllis, Dick, Jerry and Darlene, Eloise, Rob, Ruth, Gordon, Veronica, Kristen, Joan, and to our extended prayer list, and those we mention either out loud or to ourselves. Merciful God, your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, Today, we celebrate the birthdays of uh, Addison uh, Sudheit, Scott Prako, Gus Grimes, and Cindy Rogers, who uh, there's going to be coffee and cake afterwards in the uh, community room. <laughs> Baptism for uh, Carrie Cordier and Cheryl Hannon and the anniversary of Dennis and Janine Elderson, uh, 48 years. Merciful God, the one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that uh, steadfast love surrounds them, especially today, uh, uh, Dick Berger. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful Father, 
Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another as you are able. Please stand as you are able. provider, you have not filled us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift 
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With Richard and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, 
forth in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat and drink the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. You may be seated. this gift of the body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with this bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us God's peace.
be seated for a moment. Uh, a number of uh, announcements. Uh, first of all, it's, it's great to see so many people. Um, we're, uh, I wouldn't say gradually getting back to our regular normals. It's kind of by leaps and bounds. And it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see. And now that we're singing together, it's wonderful to hear again uh, what we what we do so well together, which is gather uh, uh, gather around our uh, music and sacrament. Uh, thank you, uh, Susan, for continuing to lead us in in that. Um, the bunch of uh, notices in the bulletin uh, 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 Wednesday night our. Uh, uh, Lenten midweek service will continue. Uh, thank you very much to Mike Perrone uh, leading last week in my absence. I understand there was a technical uh, glitch and uh, perhaps not everyone was able to log on through Zoom this past Wednesday. We think we have resolved, uh, resolved that issue. Um, you'll also notice and you heard us remind God in our prayers today that there's a reception following, uh, follow, there's coffee hour following the service today for the first time in two years, I think it's been. Um, did we have coffee? We did kind of have a, yeah, but this is, this is, this is the real thing. Uh, so please, uh, please join us if you, uh, if you're able and, uh, um, and if that feels good for you, join us in, in Charter Hall uh, celebrating. Uh, I came here yesterday and I just looked in Charter Hall and without knowing it, I knew that, that uh, Cindy Rogers was behind the hospitality because Cindy Rogers doesn't do anything. I mean, Chris Rogers, I'm sorry, doesn't do anything just a little bit. She does it, if she's gonna do something, she does it big. Um, and uh, it's, it's really wonderful. Uh, there are notices in here about Easter breakfast and about the Easter garden. Um, please um, uh, uh, take, uh, take note of that. And um, uh, in the other things in the bulletin, in the notices, uh, please know that for any of the classes or sessions or anything like that, um, you're, you're always welcome. Uh, many of them are, are uh, both Zoom and in person, but if you're not sure about something, you can, you can check. Are there other announcements from folks gathered here? Um, any announcements from folks on, uh, gathered on Zoom? Yes, sir. You have an announcement. We are growing. We have 62 attendees today. 62 people in, in work, present in worship. And Bill, can you tell how many, how many households are uh, joining us by Zoom? There were 19. 19, all right. And some of those households have, have a couple people or more in them. So um, we are, uh, I, I think, and I have heard from a number of folks, both gathered and folks who, who aren't comfortable yet uh, gathering or can't, how much they appreciate that we have both options available and uh, that it's, it's not an either or. And uh, or we, in my opinion, we are carefully moving in the right, in the right direction. And I appreciate uh, everyone's patience. Any other announcements? Go in peace, serve the Lord. And go in peace to Charter Hall. Okay.